Ladies and gentlemen, the Nintendo Switch is here. That's right, the console that you knew as the Nintendo NX for so many tantalizing months finally has a release date, March 2017, a name and a face. Here it is. In this Rewind Theater, we're going to look at some of the secrets peppered throughout this reveal trailer, and we're going to start by looking at the machine itself. Or, well, maybe the machines, because what you have here is the main console, the tablet. That has all the power, all the technology in it, the NVIDIA Tegra chip, a custom version of it, but, but you you also see the dock. You slide this this uh, console actually into this dock, and that will ensure that your your gameplay screen is on the television. You put these little controllers on the side, and you can pull it right out, and boom, the gameplay switches right to the display, as you can see here when you take it out. There you go. And man, Legend of Zelda, I want to play that game on the go. So now we're going to look at, you know, the back of the machine a little bit. So uh, we've got this little slot here at 129, where you can see for a very short for, for a very short time, you can see how thin it really is when it sits in this dock here. Pretty cool. You can see the four, uh, the four shoulder buttons as well, right? Some beefy, big analog looking triggers, all the buttons. You can see vents at the top. You know, this machine has some power, you know, equal to, uh, to some of the modern consoles out right now. So it, it's going to need a vent as well. So now we're going to look at the uh, gamepad here on the side. Do you see those little controllers? They're called Joy-Con. They can be uh, attached to the main device, or they can be de detached and really make this device a true portable, not just a tablet where you have to use a touchscreen. By the way, we have no idea if this has a touchscreen, uh, but a device that you can play anywhere. And it's got full featured buttons. It doesn't though have a D-pad as you can see here. It has more the the kind of the classic Nintendo 64 camera button setup on the left side. On the right, you know, you can see the the traditional controller buttons that of course allows them to be turned sideways. So now we're going to take a look at what that actually looks like when you take it with you. You know, this gentleman here on the airplane is demonstrating that it has a kickstand. Now you know why the headphone jack is on the top, of course, as well, right? You can put it on the tray table in front of you. You can see the game card slot here, too. That's right. It uses game cards. No disc media. You know, that's really important for battery life, of course, and being a, a good portable. But you can see, you know, right here, it's actually not the same as a 3DS cartridge. This takes proprietary, you know, Nintendo carts. Uh, you can see it's a, a you know little little uh, narrow more narrow than the 3ds card and a little beefier than uh, what you what you used to um, and then you can see what you can do when you're sitting in the airplane you can take these two joy cons off and you can play them almost like a Wii mode and a nunchuck with the with the Wii or the Wii U where you have two separate controllers in your hands now we don't know if any of these have motion controls or an accelerometer in it but you know you can definitely hold them separately like this to make this ultra super portable. Uh, what you're also seeing here is Skyrim. You know, we don't know if this means you'll be playing the Skyrim Special Edition or a different version of this game, but that's an important note here that this machine is powerful enough to run a game like Skyrim, and it is definitely better looking than the original version here. So we need to know a lot more about this. So now we're going to look at the Joy-Con grip. So that's something that the man on the plane didn't have. This is a connector that connects the two outer shells, so the two controllers that you can attach, and it actually has these ergonomic handles below. So it's not just a giant kind of Dreamcast disc controller. It looks like it can feel a little nicer in your hands as well. But you also have um, the indicators in the middle of the switch that show that currently both controllers are synced to player one. So you can see one, two, three, four on that switch tablet, um, letting you see exactly you know that you're ready to go as a single player. You know, here when we jump to this time code mark here, you can see a little closer. Do you see that tiny little D-pad in the upper right corner? Well, that's not a D-pad. That's actually the plus button that you also have the, on the Wii U. Um, on the left side, you have uh, the, the counterpart, the minus button. In the lower right, you can see the home button. You know, that lets you configure everything, pick different, different games and everything. And in the lower left, there is what's presumably a share button or some sort of kind of multi-purpose button that lets you do stuff um, that's not covered by any of the other four uh, face buttons and four shoulder buttons. Clickable sticks, we hope, we just don't know. So now, uh, you know, we would like to take a closer look at what this con this this neat little thing here is. That's actually uh, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So in addition to having, you know, the classic control styles that I included, you can also buy this thing. And it looks like the plastic is a little bit uh, see-through, right? Some people have thought maybe it's a Zelda edition controller with some markings, but we actually think you, you're seeing things through it. it has this kind of gray quartzy plastic like the classic N64, if you remember that one right here. But this controller has traditional plus and minus buttons, and it has slightly 
different looking um, you know analog sticks and much much bigger face buttons and one important factor the d-pad you know the d-pad was missing from the other controllers that would be a first for nintendo not to not have a d-pad after all they patented back in the days um that patent ran out but they're still bringing it back with this so you can see here on the left side of the Joy-Con, there's no D-pad there, but the buttons there actually show the different directions. So if you remember the Nintendo 64 gamepad with the yellow C camera buttons, those are back here, but they also um, you know, pull double duty when you disconnect these controllers as being face buttons, just, just like before. So what happens when you take one of these Joy-Cons off and you, you hold them separately? You know, these guys here, uh, we're playing uh, a game that we're gonna get to in a, in, a, in a little bit here on a bus. You can see what happens. They turn them sideways. It's gonna be a little weird weird honestly when you look at this because the the uh, analog stick is offset on one of the two so you can maybe blame the controller on you losing in Mario Kart in the future but you can see it's this kind of mini travel controller that can work anywhere you don't have to log a lot of stuff around you can just play on the go but there are other ways to play this game in multiplayer as well. You know, you're not just playing on a on a single uh, device like here. You know, if we go forward to the two minute mark, you can see what happens when your buddy also has a switch. You can actually put them back to back, and you can do multiplayer games where each person or each group has their own screen. This looks to be, of course, an NBA 2K game from the 2K guys. Um, we don't know which version will arrive, but you can play this multiplayer on the go with your buddies with your own screens, which is pretty pretty cool, right? Uh, little note here in this living room, if you look at the 223 mark right here, look at those guys in the lower left corner. Nintendo has confirmed that the Switch will, of course, use Amiibo. We haven't seen the, the NFC uh, you know, marking on the device anywhere, so we don't know where you put them to activate them, but just like with the Wii U and the new 3DS, you can use your Amiibo. And on the right side, you can see, you know, your, your controller cradle, the Switch lying there, you know, from the underside. Um, with nothing attached to it. And you can see an awesome tray up there and a ring. Oh, so many secrets. So let's look at, uh, you know, the 212 mark. Now let's talk games because even though this is a reveal, kind of a tease, Nintendo did slip in some software announcements as well. This, of course, Triple Jump is a brand new Mario game in a brand new setting. It looks much more like Mario 64 or, you know, a classic kind of sunshine. Look at this level here. You've got a bullet bill flying around just like Mario 64 navigating in 3D space. He even, even does the, the long jump. Took us all a while to master that one, if you remember. But look at all the cool stuff in the background, too. You see these kind of crystal or ice mountains there. That may be a hint at as to the gameplay style, maybe you have to reveal these and, and bring them back just like, you know, you re reveal stuff in the Paper Mario or Sunshine game. Uh, we, we don't know yet. There's so many cool little details like this little, like, Mexican, like, Day of the Dead style town with, like, the dancing cactus. I don't even know what the hell is going on here. But this looks really cool. But it wasn't just about announcing one new game. There are a couple of games here that may look familiar at first sight. This is, of course, Mario Kart 8. And what you're seeing here is not one of the included tracks. That's Yoshi's Circuit that was actually offered up as DLC after the game came out. Um, so, you know, does is it a special edition of the game plus DLC? Well, look at the screen. I think it's a little bit, bit, little bit more because in the lower, in the upper left and in the upper right, you see that you can actually hold two items now. So you can switch and pick the right one, uh, presumably. So you can, uh, you know, either choose a boost or nail somebody with a shell. There's one more thing right in the middle. Very hard to see, but that icon, that player icon right there, doesn't that look like dry bones? Yep. Let's hope Dry Bones is making a comeback. That really looks like him. And then on the right side, there's, of course, a new character not included in the game, and that's King Boo. So presumably we'll also see, see some new tracks and some new features, but this is already a big departure from the classic awesome Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. But that wasn't the only returning game. You know, one of my favorites, Splatoon, is actually being shown here to demonstrate that the system could be good for esports. What you're seeing here is, of course, not a map that was in the game or offered as part of the DLC, which recently concluded. That is an all-new map suggesting that we're going to get new features. 
What's cool about both of these games is that Nintendo is continuing the, the kind of the multiplayer communities that have formed around these games, sustaining that by releasing these new upgrades of the games. And if you don't believe yet that that's an upgrade, here is already another change. You can see there, you know, new customizable items. You can finally change the hairstyles on the characters. There's actually a second uh, spot right here where you can see, you know, the girl on the right having kind of like shorter tentacle style hair and on the left, a really cool comb over. So you can know, couple that with uh, some new pants and everything and I think we're going to get some, some really cool st new stuff hopefully not just cosmetic to dig into and then of course you know the big game itself the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We're still thinking this is going to be a launch game, but we'll have to see because no dates were given. But here's another really, really cool detail. What you're seeing here for the first time is a returning boss character from Link's Awakening. That's actually King Moblin, we believe, you know, the big red guy who uh, kidnapped Bow Wow, the pet dog by Madam, you know, Madam Meow Meow's pet dog. I can't believe I'm saying these things. But, you know, he was uh, one of the kind of mini, mini mid-boss uh, bad guys from Link's Awakening. Is there a tie to that game with Breath of the Wild? Is there a tie to other games like Wind Waker? We don't know yet. But, man, there are a lot of tantalizing details in there. I'm really excited about this system. So excited, as a matter of fact, that I'm getting together with uh, with my friends here to, to record more uh, reactions and more kind of secret analysis in our next episode of Nintendo Voice Chat, so look that up as well, and until then, be excited. <laughs>